Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD. And yes, my performance review on the Lenovo Yoga Tablet 2 running Windows 8.1. So let's get to it and see how fast and strong this tablet is. Hey guys, so uh, I'm actually remoting into the Lenovo device. I got it right here. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I, the last time I did a performance for you guys, I almost killed the recording. And I said to myself, let's do a little bit you know, let's get a little smart and let's uh, do a remote session into the machine. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I installed uh, a DS64 Extreme Edition. And uh, I like using this because I like doing the benchmark on the memory as well as the hard drive to do the reading and the writing uh, to see how fast uh, this machine is. And uh, let's go into the computer node. And within the, within the computer node, I like to go into the sensor and it detects all the sensor information such as the, the temperature, the CPU core, uh, the battery. Uh, again, this tablet actually has four cores. And right now, it's uh, it looks like they're running between 41 uh, Celsius, which is not that bad. If it was a little high, I'd be kind of concerned. Uh, but it's it's running pretty smooth. And the battery is running about uh, 3.835 volts, which is not that bad. Uh, right now it is around 58% remaining and that's not that bad. You can actually look at the overclocking. Uh, I'd be surprised if you can actually overclock this, uh, this CPU. I think the max of overclocking is about 13, 33 megahertz. Right now it's only utilizing about 533.3 mega, uh, megahertz, uh, which is not that bad. Uh, next thing is the, let's go to motherboard and uh within motherboard let's go to memory so i'm going to expand this i like to go to the memory as you can see the total memory is only 1935 which is about two gigs uh it's using about 866 to 867 megabytes you have about a gig of free it's utilizing about 49 uh 45 percent which is not that bad virtual memory is about uh 4638 megabytes which is about closely to four gigs uh, using uh, is about one gig, free is about two gigs, utilizing only 42% of virtual memory, which is not that bad at all. Paging file size, or the current size is actually 768. I mean, the machine works great for day-to-day -day basic things. Uh, surfing the internet, viewing videos, editing documents. Uh, if you're doing like an intense video editing, you probably can't do it. I, if you do like maybe a three minute video, you could probably get away and actually edit and render on this particular machine. Now, the next area I like to go is inside the storage compartment of the DS64. And for me, I like to go into the physical drives. Uh, physical drives gives you a rundown of what how the partition is broken down. Uh, a lot of these devices nowadays, uh, they break it down into three partitions. Uh, one is always a reserve. You have the basic one that runs the Windows operating system and you also have a recovery partition, which I'm actually working on doing a video and showing you guys how to do that. And uh, one of the things I like to do is on all my machines, I love to run a uh, system stability test. So let's run that. And uh, from here, most likely you could run this test maybe six to three hours, but I don't have that time. I ran it for like an hour straight. And the performance was great. Like right now, I'm gonna stress the local disk. I'm gonna stress it out and see how well it works with like intense. Uh, and I mean, the hard drive, the local hard drive works great. I don't think it's a solid state drive. It's not a solid state drive. But uh, if you put like a lot of pressure to it, uh, it, it, it kind of handles kind of well. So I'm gonna stop this test right now. Uh, let's uh, uncheck this. And let's stress out the CPU. Uh, CPU, like any machine, will cap. It will just basically flatline. Any machine that you kind of stress out is going to go flatline. Uh, I don't recommend you benchmarking your CPU overnight because most likely you're just going to you know overburn it. You don't want to do that. Uh, but I've done this test for about an hour or two on this particular device, and it ran real smooth with. Uh, surfing the internet, opening applications, and run really smooth. I liked it. I, I pretty, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, another thing you could probably do. Uh, let's stop this. It's gonna stop this right now. 
We're gonna close this. And another one, another test that I like benchmarking on particular devices, let's do a disk benchmark. And with the disk benchmark, I like to do a, uh, let's do a retest suite. And let's start this. Uh, so the retest suite, it, what it does, it does a reading and writing uh, test to see how fast it works. Uh, the results that I had when I first did it was great. It was really fast. Uh, again, like I said, opening up document documentation locally runs extremely fast. Uh, right now it's doing a linear read and that's going to take a while. So I'm actually going to let that run. We're going to minimize that. We're going to come back into that test. So let's go into tools and with tools, let's do one more test. Let's do a cache and memory uh, benchmark. Let's run this right now. Uh, this test went well as well. Uh, the reading, the writing, and the copying, and as well as the latency was extremely fast. Numbers weren't pretty high. If the latency and the reading and writing and the copying was extremely high, then it would be a problem. Uh, but again, look at the reading is about uh, 6,231 millibytes per second. Uh, for the writing, you got about 6,861 megabytes per second and the copying right now is 5,876 millibits of uh, megabytes per second and the latency is a whopping has to be down to nanoseconds 141.5 nanoseconds which is a little I don't know I think the first time that I ran this test, it was around uh, single digit, uh, double digits, not in triple digits. It's running in triple digits, which I'm kind of concerned. Uh, the L1 cache is the numbers are pretty good for the reading and the writing, and as well as the copying. The latency, I kind of the L1 cache is great, 1.8 nanoseconds, which is great. Uh, the L2 cache uh, is looking good the numbers are looking good 18.3 nanoseconds for the latency which is okay again uh the processor is a quad core it works great for this particular device i'm telling you for the price it's great I'm not trying to sell it for you guys but i mean if you're trying to find a low budget tablet device that runs windows and you need it for editing your word documents your excel powerpoint this is the device that you should look into because it's a hybrid you you're able to use it as a regular tablet and a regular laptop you know it, it's awesome and last but not least like I always love to do these reviews with you guys and I like to give you guys a chart so I have an Excel sheet of my battery usage and my battery charging because for any device that we purchase nowadays is what's the deal with the battery you know how well does the battery work now when I started, I started with 100% at 1221 on the 2nd of February, and I was doing light switching between apps like sports, weather, and Skyping. Uh, about two minutes passed, it went down to a percent. Uh, I was running the benchmarking, it went down to about 97%. Uh, it was dormant, meaning I, I didn't touch it at all, uh, but it was still on, the display was still on. I didn't power it off or put it into sleep mode. Uh, the power went down to 86% and about, I would say a good, a good hour, uh, percentage went about, it was still 81%. Uh, around 628, that's when I started traveling to go home, uh, it was 80%. Uh, I powered it off, basically sleep mode, like you know, you, the way that you do in your iPad, you just hit the power button and it would just go to sleep mode. It's still running, but it, uh, it's kind of like in hybrid mode. Uh, by the time I got home... Uh, it was already 79%, which is pretty great because the time, an hour, you only you only lost 1% with that hour time. It, it wasn't being used at all. Uh, I started watching a little bit of movies for the rest of the night. Uh, by the time I went to sleep, around 9.20ish, it was already down 58%. Now, the following day, uh, early in the morning, I checked on it. It was already 53%. So, overnight, you lost about 5%. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Again, uh, the machine was off. Uh, it wasn't completely shut down, but losing 5% is not that bad. Uh, I started traveling again, went to work. By the time I went to work, 52%. Again, that 1% of traveling, which it took about two hours or hour, uh, was great. 
Uh, again, I started streaming videos, playing music, surfing the net uh, around 9.26, about an hour or so, 46%. Uh, and throughout the entire day until 1 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, I was doing the same thing, streaming, playing videos, and just uh, just surfing the net, just playing around, manipulating and benchmarking it. By the time 106 hit in the afternoon, it, already, it was already at 7%. At six percent, that's when I got the nice little warning saying that it was low battery. And at one twelve, which is about uh, five four minutes later, uh, five percent, it just completely died. the The tablet won't even give you another warning. It's just gonna basically shut down on you and just go kaboom. Okay. So if you look at the timeline, uh, I started around twelve twenty one, and it completely shut down at one about one uh, thirteen the next day. So that's about 24 hours, right? It's about 24 hours, right? 24 hours. It's a 24 hours uh, that I've used this device, and the battery is amazing. Again, with 9600 milliamps, you kind of expect it. Again, because I wasn't using it like a, a intensively, uh, the battery lasts a little longer. Okay. Now, battery and charging. Uh, this kind of disappointed me because the battery and charge took uh, it took some time. Uh, again, the because the battery wasted around 113, I, I plugged it in right away. Uh, it, it started up again with 5%. Uh, when it reached around 422 in the afternoon, which is me getting ready to get head home, uh, it reached only 60, 61%. So that's about, uh, what is it, three hours? Three hours just to get to 61%. Then about uh, 444, this is when I'm, I, I powered it off. I just completely powered it off. It was around 68 percent, uh, so it took about 22 minutes to reach. You know, it hit seven percent to get to 68, which is not that bad. Uh, and then I did some traveling. By the time I got home, I turned it on. It was still 68. By the time I went to bed, or I started getting ready to bed, it was 8:58, and it was already 100 percent. So if you look at the timeline, I would say it took about six and a half or seven hours for the battery to get a fully full charge. Uh, two hours, two hours and change, you would get 50%. Um, but it, again, if you are uh, a person on the rush all the time and you will need to get to 50%, uh, by time, I would say if you get to 50%, which is around here, you have about, I would say, two, two, three hours with that 50%. You, you, could, you, could, you could play around with that three hours. And still um, do as much as you can with the tab, well, you know, with the tablet with 50% of battery life, which is not that bad. And that's it, guys. That is my and that's it, guys. That is my performance review on the Lenovo Yoga Tablet 2 with Windows 8.1. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the bottom of the video at the comment section. Don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video as well as this guy. <laughs> and I catch you guys on the next performance.